Foreign Minister Wu, thank you very much for having us here. Absolutely welcome. Let's kick off by uh, Taiwan-Israel uh, relation. Mm -hmm. I mean, as soon, if everything goes as planned, um, we will have a new government mm -hmm. and an old new Prime Minister, mm -hmm. Benjamin Netanyahu. Mm -hmm. What is your message uh, to the new old Prime Minister uh, regarding uh, the relationship between Taiwan and Israel? Uh, that is a very good question. And that is also the objective of the Taiwanese government in developing closer ties with Israel. Uh, if you look at the relations between Taiwan and Israel, uh, other than the fact that we share the same values, I think there's a lot for us to exchange with each other. Uh, economy is definitely one thing. You know, Taiwanese people would love to come and make investment or do business with uh, Israel. And the Israelis are very uh, famous of uh, being able to do business worldwide. So this is uh, the uh, uh, most important area for the two countries to continue to develop relations with. And another area is people-to-people -people ties. Uh, we have some tourists and some students who want to go to Israel, and I'm sure there will be Israelis who want to uh, come to Taiwan. And based on this, I think we can de develop closer educational, cultural, and tourism type of uh, connections with each other. Uh, we have recently signed some uh, memorandum of understandings with each other, and that is a fact. Uh, that uh, we tried very hard and the Israeli government has responded uh, to improve the relations with each other. And one thing I would like to mention is a global cooperation and training framework. Uh, what that does is for Taiwan and some other countries uh, to work together to set up workshops to train people in specific areas. Uh, we recently did that uh, for the uh, digital economy but we also did that with the United States, with Japan, Australia, and et cetera, uh, on uh, cybersecurity, on disinformation, on maritime security, uh, or on uh, cybersecurity, and et cetera. And these are all very successful events, and we hope we can continue to work with the Israeli governments in this regard. Um, what do you have a specific message to the new prime minister, to Benjamin Netanyahu, regarding to the Chinese aggression towards uh, Taiwan, and how do you expect him to act mm. when it, if such so uh, come, uh, mm. come along? Uh, what I would like to say is that Taiwan is a democracy, and Israel is also a democracy, and we share the same values. And Israel is uh, uh, facing similar international environment like Taiwan. We are facing threat from China, and Israel is uh, constantly facing threat as well. And under these kinds of circumstances, the two countries uh, should have uh, synergies with each other. And we hope that uh, we can uh, support each other at the time of need. We hope that Israel can support Taiwan and the time when uh, Israel needs it, uh, we will support Israel as well. I have a really simple question. Why is China afraid of Taiwan? Uh, that is a very complicated question, even though you ask it in, in a very simple way. Uh, China is a highly authoritarian country. And we noticed the uh, 20th Party Congress. Uh, Xi Jinping assumed the third term. He assumed the third term by eliminating all his uh, political opponent. And now he has all the power in his hands. And those uh, highly authoritarian country, uh, the government, and in the case of China, is the uh, Communist Party uh, of China. They are afraid of dissent. And under that kind of circumstances, they don't want their people to enjoy the same degree of freedom like ours. And therefore, they regard Taiwan as a threat because Taiwan enjoys freedom and democracy. And the Chinese people can always say that, look at Taiwan, we share the same cultural heritages, and how come Taiwan can enjoy that and we cannot in China? And that is going to be a threat to the Chinese government. And we hope the Chinese government can also look at this fact that if Taiwan can develop itself into a democracy, China can as well. Hmm. You know, I've been uh, here for the last three, four days. Uh, the country is absolutely amazing. People are very polite. Democracy, freedom of speech. Um, I just don't understand why Taiwan is not part of the United Nation. Hmm. What is your message to the global world hmm. and specifically to the fact that Taiwan is not in the United Nation? Mm -hmm. Uh, this is a very good question, and it deserves a very good answer. Uh, since you are here in Taiwan, you know that uh, Taiwan is a democracy, and we have a government, uh, and the president is uh, popularly elected through democratic ways. Mm -hmm. And we also have a parliament. The parliament is also elected uh, democratically. 
and we also have a military to protect Taiwan, and we also have Ministry of Foreign Affairs. We issue visa, we issue passport, and all these represent uh, sovereignty. And the government has been exercising exclusive jurisdiction over the territory under its control. And therefore, Taiwan is a de facto country, uh, even though it is not recognized by most of the countries in the world. And therefore, that made it very difficult for Taiwan to apply for membership or participation in the United Nations. And you know, China is becoming very powerful, and the Chinese forces have been penetrating into the Secretariat of the United Nations, and they twisted one uh, resolution adopted by the United Nations General Assembly back in 1971. It's called Resolution 2758. And they say it publicly, and they shopped that uh, uh, interpretation uh, for the uh, Secretariat to adopt. They say that according to this resolution, Taiwan is part of China, and therefore Taiwan matters, or Taiwan issue is uh, China's internal affairs. And they try to uh, prevent other countries from having relations with Taiwan. And China is so powerful these days, they, are, they have so many cronies. Uh, we know that China is trying to prevent as much as possible from Taiwan to become a member. Exactly, exactly. And they are able to buy off some countries uh, to vote together with China. And therefore, it's made very difficult for Taiwan to participate in. But fortunately, uh, there are more and more countries understanding that even though it is very hard for Taiwan to participate in the UN or other organizations associated with UN, but they are willing to develop closer ties, political, economic, cultural, and etc., with Taiwan without establishing diplomatic relations. You know, it's amazing because we're talking about the shared values. Uh, there's so many more than that. We have a lot, a lot of shared things. I mean, Speaking about the UN, we've seen how Taiwan is being treated in the UN. We've seen how Israel has been treated in the in mm -hmm. the UN. Mm -hmm. uh, we've seen the shared threats, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's uh, from China or from uh, enemies uh, uh, in the border of uh, of Israel and obviously uh, Iran. Uh, but we should definitely also speak about the positive things, and which is mm. the shared values mm. that the Israeli people and the Taiwanese people exactly. has. Can you please elaborate mm. more on that? Mm -hmm. Uh, you are absolutely right uh, that we share a lot of things together and therefore uh, the federal democracies or Israel and Taiwan uh, needs to work closer with each other so that we can show support to each other. Uh, even though Taiwan is not recognized by most of the countries in the world, we are not a member of the United Nations and etc. But the way we do it is to perform like a force for good in the world like we are already a member of the United Nations. So whenever there's a joint resolution in the United Nations want to sanction against any aggressor uh, like Russia or uh, against North Korea, Taiwan will always be part of it. And this is something that uh, I'm personally very proud of uh, when uh, I was serving as a national security advisor back in 2016 and 2017. Uh, North Korea was threatening the region, even though Taiwan was not threatened. But when we saw that the United Nations has passed a resolution to sanction uh, against uh, North Korea, Taiwan joined the sanction. Taiwan not only joins the sanction, but we cut off our trade ties with North Korea. So that is how Taiwan is regarded by those countries in this region who, is also, who are also uh, threatened by North Korea. And I would also like to uh, share with you some of the things we have been doing rather well. Uh, for instance, uh, when the COVID started and uh, the world is in shortage, in serious shortage of uh, face masks. Mm -hmm. And we have been providing face masks to other countries uh, in a way that we are not asking for any return. Uh, by the same token, when the war in Ukraine started, we provided lots of humanitarian assistance to Ukraine. And it's not just coming from the Taiwanese government, but it's also from the Taiwanese people. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, the Europeans uh, feel it especially. So we are very glad that uh, even though Taiwan is not a member of the United Nations and China has been working very hard to prevent that from uh, happening, but Taiwan's uh, force being a force for good uh, is not stopped by China. So one more thing that I see very similar between Taiwan and Israel is the global misinformation when it comes to both of these countries. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of social media and in the uh, in mainstream <laughs> media, a lot of uh, even lies <laughs> when it comes to Israel and when it comes to Taiwan. Yes. What is your message mm -hmm. to the people who, you know, they're not realizing 
uh, the full picture, or they're not seeing the full mm. picture because of these misinformations and lies and you know, twisting the facts. Mm. Mm. What is the message for them? Well, I think the message is rather simple. Uh, we need to do fact check. Uh, Taiwan has uh, under relentless uh, attack of uh, disinformation. And the government has been dealing with it, and Taiwan also developed some NGOs work voluntarily in dealing with the disinformation. You know, we have uh, COFAX, we have uh, Taiwan Fact Check Center, and we also have a Double Think Lab, and etc. And these are working independently, but at the same time, they are working with the population, working with uh, the Taiwanese government to dispel the, dis the uh, disinformation uh, initiated by China. And therefore, uh, if the regular people throughout the world want to understand more about Taiwan, uh, read the mainstream news here in Taiwan. And I think that is going to help uh, the regular people throughout the world to understand Taiwan more. And a better way yet is to come and visit Taiwan, to spend a few days over here, to speak with the regular people, to engage in shopping, uh, or to uh, visit the sites that they want to see, to know what Taiwan is all about. You know, we, I used to work as a Maintenance Affairs Council Chairman, and uh, I initiated a policy to allow the Chinese tourists to uh, come to Taiwan. And they loved it, because Taiwan is very different from the Chinese propaganda. And especially in the evening, they love to watch our talk shows on the television. You know, in the talk shows, the politicians are shouting at each other, and they thought uh, that maybe a Taiwan politics is going to fall apart. But the next day, when they go on the street, Taiwan is so peaceful and so calm and so nice and so safe. Very secure. So that's Very. Right. That's right. And therefore, uh, it is wonderful uh, if people can come and see us here in Taiwan. You know, there's a reason why I'm smiling because when what you're saying, if I put you as the minister, uh, foreign uh, minister of Israel, it would be exactly the same uh, answer. Um, you know, uh, we're talking about the Chinese uh, aggressiveness, and um, it seems like China is trying to scare Taiwan and the Taiwanese people. Mm -hmm. Are you afraid? Uh, we are seriously concerned. And we don't want that to happen. We don't want war to happen, because war is going to mean devastation for a lot of people, including some parts of China. But China's uh, objective is to scare us off so that we will give up what we treasure right now, freedom of sovereignty, and to enter into a negotiation that China has already set up. Uh, you know, China has already set some conditions for Taiwan to accept uh, for negotiations. And what they set up is unification, that is the end game. They put the end game as a precondition. They say we have to accept one country to system model. And you know, one country to system model in Hong Kong has collapsed. Uh, and they want us to accept that. Uh, and uh, before we accept that, they are not going to uh, talk to Taiwan. And they will continue to uh, mount pressure on Taiwan, and the purpose is to bring Taiwan to heal, and they want to take Taiwan in. They want to annex Taiwan without using a military force. But to the Taiwanese people, we say, no way. You know, we treasure freedom here. We treasure our sovereignty. Uh, we like the way we are. Are we going to see you sometime soon in Israel? Uh, I hope I can, but it's up to the discussions of the two governments. I don't want to uh, make any uh, prejudgment, but I hope I have a chance at some point. And last, what do you have a message specifically for the Israeli people? Uh, for the Israeli people, uh, I would like to say that uh, look at the two countries. Uh, we share the same economic interest and we trade with each other. We have people visiting each other. And at the same time, we are under similar international environment. And under these kinds of circumstances, we hope that the Israelis can show interest uh, in Taiwan. And at the same time, uh, we hope that the uh, uh, average Israelis can have a chance to come and visit us here in Taiwan to understand the opportunities here. Foreign Minister Wu, thank you very much for this opportunity and thank you for hosting us here. Thank Thanks you, so Joseph. Thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you.